Go for it. Aloha Snack Bar, everyone. It's the one, the only, the gorilla in the Econo Mist coming to you live on another special edition with the, this is the man of the hour, the man of the week, the guest preeminence is none other than Harley Schlanger. He needs no introduction because of his vast swath of knowledge, the familiarity that this audience has with him. And if you haven't found out who Harley Schlanger is, just go to LaRouchePack.com, LaRouchePack.com. Without any further ado, or me hogging up the airspace anymore, Harley, how are you, buddy? I'm doing okay, V. How are you? I'm I'm doing great. I know you're uh, overcoming some a uh, little bit of a you're a little sick, but I'm thankful that you're here. I'm thankful that you're able to share with us what is going on in the world and the real moves that are occurring on the planet, man. So thank you for being on. Well, it's good to be with you, and uh, you know I think a lot of people get sick here in Berlin. I, I'm not sure whether it's the weather, the air, the political environment, or what, but. Uh, Something's definitely going around. But look, let me get right to the point. Yeah. We've got to deal with a problem that's affecting the, the planet. And it's a plague known as George Soros. Yes. We're just doing a, a, a special report on Soros' efforts against Trump. Now, some of it's very obvious because Soros, as we talked about last week, Soros funds these Jacobin mobs. Yeah. The, whether it's... Uh, the, the, the so-called, um, uh, what was it, moveon.org and things like that, yeah. the demonstrations, code pink, things of that sort. He also funded the, the Hillary Clinton campaign, but he's got his tentacles into the Republican Party. Going back to 2001, Soros had a special relationship with John McCain, and he helped fund John McCain's uh, Reform Institute. Uh, at the time, the other leading funder for that was Teresa Hines, uh, also known as Teresa Carey. Yeah. So this guy Soros uh, is known also for color revolutions, funding operations, which create the cover for the CIA and the deep state to come in and overthrow governments. And as Putin said, and Putin knows this because he, Putin saw this happen in uh, Georgia, he saw it happen in Ukraine. Uh, they tried to overthrow Putin. They're still trying to overthrow Putin. But Putin warned Trump that he's facing a color revolution. But Soros has an operation inside the Trump camp, and that's the Treasury Secretary designate Mnuchin. Mnuchin. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't like Mnuchin because of Goldman Sachs, and that's good enough reason for me. But it goes deeper. Mm. Uh, when Mnuchin left Goldman Sachs, Soros set up his hedge fund. He mm. actually worked directly for Soros for a year and then uh, set up the Dune Capital, which was funded by Soros and a couple of others. <coughs> and Mnuchin was a heavy contributor to Democrats and uh, to some Republicans. But the tip-off for us was his testimony before the Congress last week when he was asked about Glass-Steagall. And he right. completely lied about a Federal Reserve report. The Fed did a report which said that Dodd-Frank is affecting liquidity flows in the banking system. That's horse now, crap. Were, well, Dodd-Frank is affecting the smaller banks. Right, not the big boys. Yeah, the big boys, yeah, exactly. They have no problem getting liquidity. Right. But the Fed point in terms of the regional and savings and others banks is definitely true. They are being affected because they, they can't compete with the big banks to get the credit. But Mnuchin said that the report said Glass-Steagall would affect the credit and the bond ratings and, and the liquidity. So he distorted a report in order to put out a lie, which is that Glass-Steagall would cause a severe dislocation of the economy. Now, the other part of the lie is the bigger lie. The economy is totally dislocated. You know, the economy is in a wreck, and it's being kept alive by quantitative easing and, and uh, breaks being given to the big banks so they don't have to account, do proper accounting, and so on. So this guy is inside the administration to sabotage the administration. And LaRouche put out a statement calling for Trump to fire Mnuchin. Uh -huh. And I think this is something that the your, your listeners should pick up. 
we need to get this guy, get rid of this guy. Uh, yeah. He's a foul ball. He's a, an operative. I mean, it's interesting. From what I know, uh, Kushner, the son-in-law, is no great fan of George Soros. Right. And yet here you have Soros inside the Trump camp. Right. So if we're going to get any progress on Glass-Steagall, on infrastructure, on dealing with Russia, I mean, Soros is a, a key guy in calling for the overthrow of Putin. Correct. What so do you I think, think this is a... Do you, do you think, I mean, I mean, Mnuchin is a guy that, that you know, that the, the Trump administration brought in. Is there an angle that's being worked here? Is, did they bring the guy in to get, get him fired to begin with? Uh, is he, because my, my thing is this, Mnuchin is, he thinks he's, a, he's a, you know, in control. But knowing that Trump is a type A micromanager, uh, is there a strategic reason that's going to benefit Trump bringing in Mnuchin? Is there a making maybe making him a, a straw man? Maybe making him take the fall on something? You know, that, well, that, that's what I'm trying to think because it doesn't make any sense having a, a guy that this bad. I mean, this is a guy who was, you know, like my like my friend Bix Weir said, uh, was kicking people out of their homes with in in, in in false foreclosure deals that were going on in the West Coast. Yeah, the, he took over Indy Mac with money yeah. from Soros and set up One West, and it was a notorious bank. And he said, look, there would have been a lot worse damage done had he not taken over the bank, which I, I think is very difficult to prove. But I look, I don't know whether Trump has some Machiavellian view of this thing. Uh, Mnuchin came along and offered to raise money for him when a lot of the, the Wall Street guys were turning away from Trump. Yeah. Uh, there also, don't forget, Trump himself at one point got a bridge loan from Soros on one of his properties when it was collapsing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he's got a little weakness there, a little softness. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't speculate on it. I just think the solution is get rid of this guy. Yeah, right. I agree with you. Now, that the, the reason that's important besides everything else is that the situation with Russia is going to become very, very interesting. Uh, Lavrov, the foreign minister, just issued a call for Russia, China, and the United States to work closely together right. against terrorism and on economic development. And the Chinese said, absolutely, we can work with Trump and with Putin. Right. Now, yesterday, the King of Jordan met with Putin and said he praised Putin for the work they're doing in Syria, and said, we'd like to work with you. And, and he said, Putin has been a stabilizing influence. Yes, he has. And then you have the former head of the European Union, Romano Prodi, coming out at, at, with a group of uh, other significant Euro types saying the Europeans should move to end the sanctions on Russia before Trump does to get ahead of the game. Now, <laughs> the typical EU type thinking. Yeah, But it's also true that these guys have a lot to they, – they can play a, a leading role. Germany is going to be the key country in Europe. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, in Germany, you've got the most insane responses. And I'll just give you the, the, the worst. The editor of Die Zeit, which is one of the leading publications in Germany, a guy named Joffa, was interviewed the other day and said, how do you deal with Trump? And he said, well, maybe murder in the White House would be a good thing. What is wrong with these idiots? Meanwhile, their country is being overrun by migrants. Their women are getting raped. Uh, it's turning into a very dangerous climate over there. And they're still in their left-wing stupidity. These so-called tolerant morons are, are putting out edicts like this. It's unbelievable, Harley. Well, I mean, you expect it from someone like Madonna. Yeah. But this is an editor of a, a very serious German publication. And I, I think what you see is that they've become unhinged. They have no solutions. They don't know what to do. And as a result, they're just striking out. Yeah. Now, another example, this is Schumer. You know, Schumer sometimes can be reasonable. Sometimes he's an idiot. But I, I just, someone sent me an op-ed he wrote in 1987 in the New York Times uh, opposing the repeal of Glass-Steagall. And the, the, it was titled, Don't Let Banks Become Casinos. Now, this is in 1987. Twelve years later, as a senator, he voted to repeal Glass-Steagall, saying we have to get rid of it for competitiveness of U.S. banks. 
So, you know, what happens to principle with these guys? It goes right out the window. Right. So the, the, the real issue here is will the American people work with Trump or hold Trump to his campaign promises? And the Glass-Steagall one is important because the, the financial system is continuing to show signs of, of weakness. The housing bubble in, in England is about to collapse. Usually the housing bubble in, in the United Kingdom and the United States are pretty closely related. And a, a friend of mine wrote an op-ed the other day in the Evening Standard saying if the British markets go, the British housing market goes, the United States office markets will be next. Right. Now, you know what that means in New York City. Yeah, all the commercial real estate is going to go pop. <laughs> and it's been going through the roof the last four years. Yep. And Manhattan so, apartment prices are already starting to collapse. Yeah, sure. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at the, you look down the road and you see Trump doing a few things. You know, the, the getting out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership was very important. And it created some leverage for him with people like Bernie Sanders and some of the Democrats. What he's got to do is prioritize Glass-Steagall. And that's why Mnuchin has to go. Mnuchin is part of a gang, the Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan crowd, that depends on keeping the existing non-regulations called Dodd-Frank in place right? because it favors them, it protects them. If you get rid of Dodd-Frank and bring back Glass-Steagall, you take away the power of this banking lobby. Mm -hmm. And that's urgently needed, <clears throat> both for the country and also for Trump to succeed in what he's trying to do. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. It's the nail in the coffin. I mean, my, my whole thing is this. It's like, you know, we got to transition from the bubble economy to an actual physical economy, uh, from the economy of make-believe to an, uh, an economy of durable goods and manufacturing. Uh, the way you do that is you, you'd have to end the speculation. You'd have to end the, the market rigging. And, and Glass-Steagall is the nail yeah, the and, that puts that to an end. Exactly. And then, then you could actually seriously talk about going back to marking their assets to market values as opposed to their face values. Right. Because these face values are completely out of control. They're out of oh proportion to anything. Yeah, look at market capitalization. Who the hell looks at uh, Facebook and say it's a more it has a bigger market cap than ExxonMobil? That is the most stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, my favorite is Amazon compared to General Motors. I mean, yeah. at least if General Motors goes bankrupt, they've got plant and equipment, engineering patents, skilled labor, machine tools. They've got something. What does Amazon have to back it up? They have the Kindle. <laughs> they have their e-readers. The, the Kindle and the <laughs> Post the, the leading journal of fake news in the country. Oh, yes, yes, the Washington Post. No, it's only the second leading journal of fake news in the country. You're still giving the New York Times credit, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm still giving them. I think they're the best. They're dying yeah. very swiftly. You know, they, they, they gave up eight floors of their, uh, of their headquarters for rent because they can't make, they can't make ad revenue anymore. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, you know, they come around and they say, well, this is the new world that we have to compete in. Uh, you know, I, I've noticed that some of the liberal blogs that uh, barely scrape by are desperate now for funds, and they don't connect the fact that they're defending the CIA deep state in their something antagonist. That they opposed. Oh, huh? Uh, something that they historically opposed. Yeah, yeah. So that here they are, they're driving away their readers. Mm -hmm. And they're losing their ability to stay in business, and they don't make the connection to the fact that they've just turned on what their what their readers believe in. It's it's truly <laughs> incredible. So, and, and yet you have the head of CNN, Jeff Zucker, coming out, Harley, and saying that our our credibility is higher than ever. <laughs> well, you know, as, as I've always said, the when you live in a bubble, you don't realize you're in a bubble, and that's yes. what's going on with these guys. They have, they have this bubble over their heads, and, and all they can see is what's in the bubble, and they're probably oxygen-deprived as well. <laughs> oh, my God. You're absolutely right about <laughs> that. The Doral's question is really important, and I, I want to put your listeners to work on this. If anybody has connections to anybody in politics, the two things they've got to fight for is Glass-Steagall 
<coughs> and the removal of Mnuchin and the Soros crowd. Yeah. That's absolutely essential for the country. Mm. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm really losing my voice here. <coughs> no worries. Though. Yeah, so anyway, the other thing I just wanted to bring up is that the the uh, mood in Europe is shifting. I'll be able to report next week on some meetings I'll be doing uh, in Frankfurt and Hamburg and also in Brussels. Mm. As there's a, a real desire to find out what is really happening in the U.S. Right. <clears throat> so this, this should be interesting because the, uh, the shakeup in the European Parliament is enormous. You just had the president of the European Parliament resign, come back to Germany, and he's going to be running for chancellor. He's an idiot, this guy Martin Schultz. Yeah, Schultz, is a, he's, he is. He's a failure. He's a strikeout artist. You have the Italian situation, which is out of control. And, you know, the Germans are completely paralyzed because there's, they see no one to replace Merkel. But Merkel is losing popularity. That's pretty sad. Yeah. She's losing popularity at a dramatic rate. Right. right. And Germany is, is still the bedrock in terms of the economy of Europe. But it's suffering from the sanctions against Russia. It's suffering from the 0% interest rates, which are destroying the savings of their population. Now, Germany's a nation of savers. And if you can't make any money on your savings, what is that? But what happens? Mm -hmm. You demoralize a population and you impoverish them eventually. Yeah. Well, they, they, they could do uh, what your friend did, buy euro bonds. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 well, one day the euro bonds will be worth about as much as the 1923 Reichsmarks. Yeah. <laughs> you have enough wheelbarrows and you can load them up with money and maybe get a loaf of bread. Exactly correct. And that looks like where it's headed. <clears throat> so the, the what you see then in, in the debate over here, the lack of an idea of what to do is what increases the antagonism against Trump. Whether you like Trump or not, he's doing things. He's moving. Right. He's a, a moving target, which is a good way to approach it. But he's got to identify his real enemies. And, and the media, they're enemies, of course. But what's behind the media? He's got to go after this Wall Street crowd, the Bush crowd, the neocon crowd, and the Soros crowd, and lump them together as one. He did that effectively in the campaign when he targeted Jeb Bush and the Bush family and then turned on the uh, Hillary with the same basic ammunition. He's got to do that to govern. And if the media doesn't like it, tough. It actually causes people to pay attention. Right, exactly correct. And, um, I mean, recently you have uh, Trump moving very swiftly to get, that, get the wall in place, uh, cracking down on the uh, immigration the migrant the refugee crisis coming out of seven uh, Middle Eastern and North African countries. So he is moving very the, – the guy doesn't rest, Harley. He's a, he's a war machine, this guy. He's an absolute I mean, that's, machine. That's, a good, that's one of his good qualities. And, and you know, I, the, the idea of a wall for immigrants, I, I'm, I'm not so keen on that. But what I do like in his statement on it mm -hmm. was his discussion of, of shutting down the drug and gun trafficking. And, and I think that's the bigger thing that he's after. Because absolutely. You, you, that's the, one of the things that funds the dark, the deep state is the narco trafficking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's you you look at the that's why you need Glass Steagall, because you need to shut down these criminal organizations like the Bank of Hong Kong, Shanghai. Yeah. Um, the, the the Citibank, Bank of America. They've been facilitating money laundering that ends up arming terrorists. This is what Credit Suisse and Union Bank of Switzerland have been caught doing. Right. So if you really are serious about stopping these kinds of uh, relations between drugs, terrorism, and so on. You go after the banks at the top, and then you have the police work at the bottom. Correct. And you know that together can do it. Absolutely right. It seems as if, Harley, that he is doing a, a kind of operation choke point against the deep state and the cabal. 
I mean, choking them out on the financial sense, we do know that the that the bad guys still have about ninety percent of the wealth. They, they're they're, and they're yeah. holding it in all these various financial instruments. You put the nail in the coffin with a glass steagle. You do a revaluation of currency. You cancel the debt, and all of a sudden, these guys are going to be left holding the bag. And then when you cut off, we, and I really starting to think as the days go by, this whole wall is not so much about illegal immigration than it is more about cutting off the narco trafficking. Yeah. You know, and then having Mattis as the Secretary of Defense, and how he's going to go after the 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 heroin trade that's coming out of Afghanistan. Ever since we yeah. went in, that 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 exploded ninety seven percent. That's really important because that that was, you know, besides the Saudi financing, it was the heroin traffic that financed the terrorists. Yeah, and a lot of that is laundered through Western banks. So, you know, this is a, a, the, the right direction. I mean, we, we wrote a book back in 1978 called Dope Incorporated. And it had a picture of the British flying and a heroin needle on the cover. And this led to everyone attacking LaRue saying the Queen of England pushes drugs. I remember that. Said, well, the British monarchy was the leading promoter of drug trafficking going back to two wars against China yes. in the 19th century, the Opium Wars. Right. But it, it shows how people don't know history, and as a result, they're captive to these kinds of operations over and over and over again. 1,000%. Well, people don't know their history. They, they, they think, and this is the difference between critical thinkers and those that go along with what, the, what, what, what everybody else does, between us and the sheep. You know, we understand, we look at the government with a very critical eye. That It's not to be trusted. It, you know, it, it's, it's to be controlled. It's, it's to be really looked at and the sheep think that the that the you know that the, the the representatives are there for our benefit no if you have i mean look at look at the whole thing about democide right death by government over 250 million people last century were killed because of government and government has a history in drug trading and in, in narco trafficking in, in human slavery and i mean the list goes on and on and on but somehow people today think that that uh that modern governments are somehow absolved of all this, you know, past patterns, but it's the same criminal patterns that always emerge year after year, generation after generation, Harley. Well, and Soros is a key guy in an opium war against the United States with his yes. drug legalization policies and you know, the the look. This is not new. governments use drugs as a way of keeping populations docile for a long time. This is whole theory. Uh, the brave new world. You dope up a population so they accept arbitrary authority and they accept injustice. And at a certain point, you don't need to have guards and policemen. They police themselves because they need their friends. Yes. This is, is entertainment on television. So we've got a serious problem in the United States, especially among young people, but especially uh, now hitting some heroin traffickers. Were 53,000 deaths last year from heroin and opioids. That's starting to take a big toll. So if Trump is going to crack down on that, great, because that's going to affect the money flows that the big banks depend on. I agree. Hello? Hello? Yeah. I think I lost audio. I hear you. B, you there? We can hear you, buddy. Hey, yeah, we can hear you. You can't hear us? Uh, reconnect and uh, drop back in. Harley, go ahead and continue. I want to send B a text and let him know just to rejoin real quick. Okay, so I, I think okay, if, you this, if you look at this fight the drug question, it's gotten back to Soros. And Soros, you know, the Trump administration, that has to be taken up by, by Trump. But I, I think... If he has enough pressure on that, he'll do the right thing. Exactly, yes. <clears throat> and uh, V's getting ready to, to to reconnect. It looked like he dropped his audio a little bit. Okay. And it looks like some of our listeners are saying that they kind of hear it, a, a little bit of the sound breaking up. So it you know, could be the internet, but uh, he's back. There he is. Welcome back, uh, Sorry about that. I, I lost audio and, and lost connection. But, uh, yeah, very good points you brought up. It, it, it's, uh, it is Aldous Huxley's work. That he wanted a doped-up population that's hooked on entertainment, 
Uh, thus, it gets to the most basal carnal instincts of the human brain and human desires where we're just seeking uh, pleasure at all times. And we will never challenge the establishment. We will never think about our own slavery. You're absolutely correct about that, Harley. Harley? Oh, he... yeah, it looks like he's rejoined again, too. Yeah, he was. Hey, Harley, you there? Yeah, he was breaking up bad. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if he gets back on, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll have him uh, give his uh, website and his uh, his contact details where people could follow him. Harley, are you there? Are you able to get on? I'll send him an email real quick, V. No worries. Well, folks, uh, I mean, it's so true what Harley's saying. It, it, it's we can't, you know, think world. Look, the world, and this is why it's so important. If you haven't done so already, and again, it's a shameless plug. I'm not getting a penny for for saying this. Go get that book that Ivan Thorne wrote, The Nine Laws. You will understand the world is a brutal, brutal world. It is not all rainbows and unicorn farts. It is not some paradise. It is a harsh world filled with super predators, okay? With apex predators. You know, those who are trying to eat you. You need to learn how to navigate this world. And when you create <clears throat> government, and then government gets so damn big, I said this years ago, bureaucracy is large enough. It's only reason de entrée. It's the only reason for existence is to self-fund itself, to make sure that it lives dismantled. That's why we should always fearfully set up bureaucracies if we need to, but make it as streamlined as possible and as decentralized as possible with direct command, right? Now, with the bureaucracies, what, we, what needs to be done is you put a moratorium on there. That if we create a governmental department, there has to be a moratorium that when the task is done and the job is finished and moves on to something else. This is something that needs to be done. And, and this is the, one of the biggest reasons why small governments eventually become so damn large that they eat their own population and you have something called democide, which is pretty ardent if you look at human history. Okay, so this is something that the founders have fought against. Uh, Har uh, CJ, any luck with Harley? Yeah, but it looks like he's uh, not going to be able to, to make it <clears throat> back right, in. No worries. No worries. Okay. No worries. That's fine. Uh, with that being said, folks, if you guys want to follow Harley Schlanger, you could follow him on LaRouche Pack. That's LaRouche, P A C, Pack, dot com. I'm a part of that. All their, you know, Schiller Institute events. Uh, they had the last one, I think, about a week and a half ago. I, I wasn't able to attend. Uh, but you have a lot of key movers and shakers there. And if you want to get the, the finger on the pulse of what's going on globally with trade, with how the entire geopolitical, geostrategic environment is being completely changed, uh, the Rouge Pack is a great place to start. Uh, with that being said, guys, thank you all for listening in. And we'll be back next week on another Hanging with Harley. Take it away, CJ.